talking on the topic of overcoming our dark clouds in our lives. And, um, you know, we look through the Bible, we see lots of great names and personalities in the scripture, and you quickly see that each and every one of them went through depressing times in their lives, discouraging times in their lives when they honestly didn't know the future and they didn't know where to turn to or what to do. And the first person that usually pops up in lots of people's minds is Job. And this man took the most L's in this Bible and yet after all of that, he was still blameless and upright and he still looked to God. And in Job 7 verses 6 and 7, it says, my days come to an end without hope. My eye will never see anything good. Then we look at Moses, and he's described as the meekest man in Numbers, and he rises as one of the greatest examples in the Old Testament of an ordinary man who submitted to God, and he became one of the greatest in the Old Testament. He was faced with the task of leading the Israelites, and he had to be the administrator for God to, for his law. And all of this brought on him to have hate from the Israelites. And after all of that, he felt like a crushing weight on him from all of this. And so it says in Deuteronomy 1 verse 12, Moses cries out to God, how can I bear the troubles, burdens, and disputes of these people by myself? Then we look at Elijah, and he was one of the greatest prophets in the Old Testament, but he asked to have his life taken. Then we look at David, and he tried to hide his sin, and he made journal entries that spoke of his loss of strength and the ebbing away of everything in his life and groaning all day. Then we look at Jonah, and he was the firstborn missionary and he had so much anger toward God because he didn't you know, destroy Nineveh. Then we look at Jeremiah, and this man, he was so sad that he became known as one of the weeping prophets. And he even confessed many times in his book that he wished he was never born. Then we look at also Jerem, we look at Nehemiah, then we look at Ezekiel, we look at Peter. There's so many people that went through all these discouraging times and they just really didn't know where to turn to. And all of, our, all of us, all of our lips have spoken of discouragement. You know, we put people down. We also have faced hard times in our lives. We went through grief of loss and, you know, our hearts have been broken through stress. And you know, it's just human because it's numbing and it's exhausting and we felt the demotivation of depression. And then there's also the people who go through the depression of like, because they have chemical imbalance in their brains and there's nothing they can do about that. And the worst part is when they go to their churches, when they go to their families, these people tell them, oh, you know, just smile today, it's okay. Go outside, look at the sunshine, it will get better. But that doesn't help any of them. So today I'm going to be focusing on Sam 77. And we're going to be looking at some ways that we can, you know, get better and possibly feel better about the depressing times in our lives. So we're going to read from Sam 77, verses 1 to 3. It says, I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night, I stretched out untiring hands, and my soul refused to be comforted. I remembered you, O God, and I groaned. I mused, and my spirit grew faint. Now, immediately from the start, we see that the psalmist Asaph, he's hopeless. He doesn't have anything to turn to when we see him painting a picture of desperation. And in verse 2, he's talking about trouble. 
and he's feeling confined. He's feeling like all the walls are closing in around him, that you know, he's in a tunnel and there's no light ahead of him, that there's no place where he can see that he's going the right way. And then he says his soul is refusing to be comforted because he knows what, he's, what is happening to him and he's trying to shake it off, but it's not working. Then in verse three, it says, He's meditating, he's pondering on all the things that's happening to him, his situation, and he's trying to figure out a way to get out, to look through his problems and figure out a better way. And then he says his spirit becomes weak. His emotions begin to take over his logic, and he becomes a drowning man that's trying to be saved. And I'm sure many of us can relate to how he's feeling right now, but even through his battle, through his depression and his instability and his not feeling like anything is working, what's the first response that he does? He goes to God. He's cry he cries out to him and tells him, I can't do this. I feel like this. And he's trying to cope. And he's honest with God. Then we look at verses 7 through 9. Will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has his, in his anger withheld his compassion? And what do you see here? You see rejection, you see his loss of favor, you see his lack of love, you see lack of promises, you see lack of mercy and you see anger and all these negative emotions. And the psalmist is just like, you know, crying out to God and telling him all his doubts, his questions as to why he's feeling like this. And honestly, that's what God wants. Even when we're doubting him, he wants us to tell him that we're doubting him because, you know, we, we shouldn't just be going to him when we're feeling 100%. We gotta go to him when we're feeling like zero, when we're feeling one percent, when we're feeling negative zero, you know? And in verses four to six, it says, you kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remembered my song in the night and my heart mused and my spirit inquired. And it's during one of these sleepless nights that this Samus, he was thinking that maybe God is keeping me awake for a reason. And probably he was thinking that he should start thinking about the past times of the good times that he had of his blessings. So whenever you're feeling down and when you're feeling depressed, when you're feeling like you can't go on, you know, just at the beginning of your day or even halfway through your day and you start feeling like that, you know, take out a pen, take out a crayon, take out something and a paper and write down, okay, today God did this for me. Today I woke up today. You know, today I had clean teeth and he made me look pretty today. You know, just little things like that that will make you feel better about your upcoming day so that you can keep moving forward because these positive thoughts will help you to move forward. And then, when gloom closes in and everything feels like it's fading away and we want to pull the blanket over our head, then we need to stop thinking that God is bailing on us and that everyone else is bailing out on us too. In verse 13, it says, Your ways, O God, are holy. What God is so great as our God? And then when you go even further down, in verses 16 through 18, it says, the waters saw you, O God. The waters saw you and they writhed. The very depths were convulsed. The clouds poured down water. The skies resounded with thunder. Your arrows flashed back and forth. Your thunder was heard in the whirlwind. Your lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and it quaked. And after we read all these depressing parts at the beginning, and you look towards the end, what do you see? It went from the Sam is being downcast and being terribly terrified of everything that was happening to him to slowly turning to be him being hopeful and then him having affirmation in God's power. So in conclusion, I just wanted to say the three steps that we should take 
you know, whenever we're feeling low, first we gotta send out our SOS to God, you know. We gotta cry out to him, tell him everything that's on our mind. It doesn't matter, all the bad stuff, just say it, you know, whatever your frustrations are, just cry out to him. And then step two, you need to try to redirect your thoughts to the positive ones. You know, think back on all the blessings that he gave you. Every day, waking up is a blessing for all of us. And then step three, we need to think that God is the greatest thing in our lives so that no matter what happens in our lives, that we feel like he can be there for us. Amen. Amen. God bless you with these words. Amen. Yeah.